Each model begins with a commission to create a particular fish. Tracings, photos, measured dimensions, as well as personal remembrances pass from angler to artist. Since catch photos tend to celebrate an event rather than to focus on the natural beauty and aspect of a fish, an angler's recollection of the fish, even with its subjective limitations, can be a significant help in putting a project together. Somehow, this angler-artist transaction becomes a working drawing, which in turn becomes a dimensional subject in wood. Lately, I seem to be spending much more time on the start of my projects. Carving detail and scale layout, while they are all important, have become routine elements in building a fish, kind of like knitting. For me, the soul of the carving is in its beginnings. The more clearly I see the subject at this stage, the better I like the end of it. Spots and scales and tight detailed painting never will bring a poorly drawn and modeled subject to life. A well thought out carving, on the other hand, will look real and right, even devoid of highly detailed fussy surface. 19th century animal ear bronze artists who emphasized the spirit of the subject more than the intricacies of its surface bear witness to this point of view. An interesting thing about the repetitiousness of my subjects is that their appearance results as much from surroundings as from intrinsic color. Look at images of a single bright fish taken in different surroundings, camera position, or time of day, and you get 10 different fish. So this idea of refracted light affecting value and color opens up a lot of painting possibilities. Put another way, color comes as much from without as from within. This thought allows me to approach the next bright salmon I paint with a new palette. In this way, I can avoid formulas and never repeat myself. A painter whose work is a favorite is the bird illustrator Louis Fuertes. His subjects are not painted with fussy detail, but built on the strength of those wonderful drawings. What I do does obviously include detail in the paint, but my focus goes back to that right looking essential fish. The fuss always seems to take care of itself. The drawing for me is always the essence of the work. Color is interesting. I recently finished a carving for Leo Tomorrow of a 40 pound restigouche salmon. Its condition was fat, silvery bright, almost devoid of spots. A condition minted right out of the North Atlantic. Though this is the holy grail among salmon fishermen, this rocket dipped in mercury did not immediately inspire my painting jobs. I've done a lot of bright salmon, perhaps not as fresh from the salt as this guy, but a lot of bright salmon nonetheless. When I took a second look and a third and fourth, etc., etc., as is my habit and my curse, I noticed a subtle nuance in tone along its entire flank. Different shades of gray, pardon my French, were organizing how scales refracted light. Manipulating those zones of gray make the salmon look silver. When you look at a Vermeer painting, it is how he paints a brass candlestick or a silver bowl without using metallic paint. Except that on a fish, the zones of gray delineate more than the silvery light on the surface. They also map out physical structure. These colors are the surface, but they provide evidence for muscle and bone beneath. This has always been right there in front of me. 
I've been half aware and now this information has sharpened my focus. That is why color is interesting, as much for the colors I see as for the significance of the colors that I have not seen yet.